Welcome to iCreate Studios, everyone. I'm Professor Mike. Today, we're going to explore one of the most fascinating and visible astronomical phenomena, the phases of the moon. The moon has intrigued humans for centuries, guiding sailors, inspiring poets, and even marking the passage of time. But what causes these phases? Let's dive in and find out. First, let's understand what moon phases are. The moon doesn't produce its own light. It reflects the light of the sun. As the moon orbits Earth, the portion of the moon that reflects sunlight back to us changes, creating the phases of the moon. This cycle repeats approximately every 29.5 days. There are eight distinct phases in this cycle. Let's go through each one. New moon. During a new moon, the moon is positioned between Earth and the sun. The side of the moon facing us receives no direct sunlight and is not visible from Earth. Waxing. Crescent. As the moon moves in its orbit, a sliver of light begins to appear on the right side. This is the waxing crescent phase. Waxing means increasing, so the illuminated part is growing. First quarter, about a week after the new moon, we see half of the moon illuminated. This is called the first quarter because the moon is one quarter of the way through its orbit. Waxing gibbous, following the first quarter, the illuminated portion continues to grow. More than half, but not yet full. This phase is known as waxing gibbous, full moon. Two weeks into the cycle, the moon is directly opposite the sun, and its entire face is illuminated. This is the full moon, a time traditionally associated with various cultural and natural phenomena. Waning gibbous. After the full moon, the light begins to decrease. The waning gibbous phase shows more than half, but less than the whole moon illuminated, with the light now fading from the left side. Last quarter, also known as the third quarter, this phase occurs when the moon has completed three quarters of its orbit. We see half of the moon's face illuminated, but the opposite side from the first quarter. Waning. Crescent. Finally, the waning crescent phase occurs just before the new moon. The moon appears as a thin crescent on the left side, with the illuminated part continuing to shrink. Now, here are some fun facts and cultural tidbits about the moon. The term blue moon refers to the rare occurrence of two full moons in a single calendar month. Many cultures have names for each full moon of the year, like the harvest moon or the wolf moon, often based on agricultural or natural events. Lunar eclipses occur during a full moon when Earth is directly between the sun and the moon, casting a shadow on the moon. But why do these phases occur? The moon's phases are the result of its orbit around Earth and the relative positions of the moon, Earth, and the sun. As the moon orbits Earth, different portions of its surface are illuminated by the sun, and we see these changes from our vantage point on Earth. Imagine a flashlight shining on a ball in a dark room. If you walk around the ball, you'll see different parts of it lit up depending on your angle. This is similar to how we see the moon's phases. Let's talk about solar eclipses. Let's understand how a solar eclipse happens. The moon orbits Earth and Earth orbits the sun. Occasionally, the moon's orbit intersects the plane of Earth's orbit around the sun, known as the ecliptic plane. For a solar eclipse to occur, the following must align. New Moon Phase A solar eclipse can only happen during a new moon, when the moon is between Earth and the Sun. Line of Nodes The moon's orbit around Earth is tilted about 5 degrees relative to Earth's orbit around the Sun. Eclipses occur only when the moon crosses the ecliptic plane at points called nodes. If this happens during a new moon, an eclipse is possible. Perfect Alignment for a total or annular eclipse, the alignment must be nearly perfect. If the alignment is slightly off, uh, a partial eclipse occurs instead. How do you observe a solar hmm. eclipse safely? Observing a solar eclipse can be an unforgettable experience, but it's crucial to do so safely. Looking directly at the sun, even during an eclipse, can cause serious eye damage. Here are some safe viewing methods. Special purpose solar filters, commonly known as eclipse glasses, are designed to protect your eyes. You can also use a pinhole projector 
to project the image of the eclipse onto a surface. If you have a telescope, make sure it is equipped with a proper solar filter to view the eclipse safely. The phases of the moon are a beautiful reminder of the celestial dance taking place above us. Whether you're stargazing, planting a garden by the moon's phases, or just enjoying a moonlit night, understanding these phases can enhance your appreciation of our closest celestial neighbor. Thank you for joining us on this lunar journey. Keep looking up, and until next time, happy stargazing.